Hello everyone, Dominic here. How are you all doing? Today I wanted to talk about a game that I haven't really focused on that much over the years on Esports News UK, and that's Rainbow Six Siege. It's not, it's not a game I've played much in the past, I'll be honest. I'm not great with first-person shooters anyway these days, but it's really caught my attention over the past week. It's been in the news quite a bit, in the Esports News, and um, yeah, I wanted to highlight it. So yesterday, if I jump in... Ubisoft announced a bunch of esports news, several key updates, um, different esports programs around Europe, different areas, North America, and so on, and also a rescheduled um, date period for its upcoming Six Invitational. That was, of course, postponed because of COVID and travel restrictions in France. That's been rescheduled to May now and it's going to be replacing the season 2021 six major um, proper dates and venues uh, to be confirmed and they announced uh, a bunch of other changes as well to rainbow six esports programs across all regions um, there's a few here extended rosters so orgs will be allowed up to a total of 12 players under their banner with up to seven players registered for each specific roster Coaches will be given the opportunity to pause the game and discuss the strategy with their players and a standardised point system at the regional level. So I guess the UK and Ireland nationals. A regular win will be award rewarded with three points while a loss gives no points. And when the two teams fight up to overtime, the winner gets two points and the loser gets one point. So that's that's pretty... I like that. You, you know, you get awarded even if you lose a match but you make it to overtime, you get a point for it. I think that's pretty cool. Some changes to the European League here. Um, the format's going to stay the same. Online Rob Robin with best of one matches. And there's some other bits and pieces here. The last two play days will be played on a special weekend on the seventh week. And Ubisoft is revamping the online qualifiers for the European Challenger League with three open tournaments spread until the end of the summer, granting points and prize money to the participating teams. And the top five teams across all three tournaments will join the group stage. The nine National League winners and the two uh, season 2020 relegated teams making the European Challenger League a 16-team competition this year. So there's loads more info um, on Ubisoft's website around some of the changes here. Um, I've mentioned some of the rost changes, some prize money distribution here. First place, just over $60,000 for the um, May 6 major and yeah just a few little bits and pieces on, on some of the changes I've highlighted this stuff here around European is more infographics and stuff and uh, yeah um, it's an awful lot I mean this this I'll, I'll link to this in the video description there's a lot of changes here and then Ubisoft also made a bunch of other announcements as well so what I found interesting was uh, some changes around player behavior. So Ubisoft said that their early version of their reputation system has actually been shadow tested in the past season. That's been running in the background but not visible for players. So the goal of that tool is to encourage positive behavior by rewarding players with positive, positive impact on the game with new content while punishing toxicity by limiting access to ranked playlists for instance um, and this tool launches this year and it's just around there to help improve player behavior because I've heard um, with uh, Rainbow Six I have a friend who's played it quite a bit and I've spoken to a few people and I've seen that the community can be toxic I'm not calling the esports community toxic um, or not everyone of course but some of the in-game communications and discussions I mean it's like we see it in CSGO we see it in Valorant and other games I'm not excusing it but I've heard that it can be quite a difficult community to get into can be toxic so it's good to see um, some of these announcements that Ubisoft are announcing they're also announcing a new streamer mode for content creators to control their anonymity while playing so this tool will allow them to hide their name region ping hide everyone else in the match, include a hidden matchmaking delay, hide the current clearance level and profile image. And a first version of this tool will be available in the Crimson Heist test server. Uh, Crimson Heist is a new um, 
update that Ubisoft have announced. I'll come on to that in a minute. And I want to talk about um, toxicity in Rainbow Six because the well-known caster Jess recently announced she was quitting streaming Siege over toxicity and assault threats. Um, so, yeah, I think she later put out a tweet um, saying that there was other reasons or... Um, where was it here? I did see her put a tweet out saying, there we go. After realising something was really wrong, I stopped intensely streaming Siege. I've now realised this is not enough and I've not been doing too good overall. Finding out I'd be stuck away from my partner again really tipped me over the edge. So she's only going to be streaming sporadically throughout the next few weeks, if at all, trying to get through that. But um, Dick Zerto and a few other publications did an article on this story, so go check that out. Um, but yeah, I wanted to highlight that um, Ubisoft trying to improve player behaviour. Resident Evil skins. I know this is not uh, this is not e super esports related, but it caught my attention. Um, big fan of Resident Evil over the years, and they've put in some some skins into the game. There's going to be uh, an elite. Uh, sorry, yeah, an elite skin of Jill Valentine from Resident Evil that will be available for the operator Zofia. Um, with another skin coming later this year. And Ubisoft has partnered with Capcom creative director Ikumi Nakamura for the release of a series of skins, starting with Echo and Dokibai. I have probably said that wrong, releasing on March 2nd. And there's a, there's some, there was a video that Ubisoft did, um, which I'll link to as well. And you can see here, this is the skin I mentioned, the Jill Valentine skin for Zofia. So that's coming. Other announcements, Year 6 Roadmap. Um, so I mentioned the Crimson Heist update, but also a new operator, Flores, who's the first openly gay operator in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I covered this the other day because I saw it was breaking and a lot of people were talking about it on social media and I think it's important to highlight rep better representation in games. I actually think he's really cool. He's billed as a master thief. Um, Flores is an attacker... <clears throat> Master Thief with an explosive drone. Um, yeah, and in a, a page on the Rainbow Six, uh, the Ubisoft Rainbow Six website, there's a line here that says, um, in general, I'd say he's a good mate, a bit awkward, but he listens when others speak, which is more than I can say for a lot of people. Every night he calls home to talk to his husband, but he's very private about their relationship. He cares about people in general, but his marriage is on another level. Even when he takes it off, his, even when he takes off his ring, it never leaves his person. And so, a lot of people are talking about, oh, it's the first openly gay uh, operator in Rainbow Six. Um, does it matter? Uh, yeah, I'd say it does. I mean, it's more representation, isn't it, in games? There are people calling for better representation. I think it's good to have a game with a mix of characters from different backgrounds. Why not? Absolutely. Um, and then in other news as well, uh, quality of life updates. Um, there's a few bits and pieces here. Players will be able to control cameras and gadgets after their death. Attackers will now have the possibility to change their operators and load out as many times as they want in the prep phase and armor will be switched to health. And uh, Ubisoft said that DDoS attacks are down by 90% this year and will remain the main focus for them going forward. So that's some, some of the updates there. I've spoken about Flores. Now, of course, as well, um, Rainbow Six has the UK and Ireland Nationals, which is great. This is... UK and Ireland tournament. We have a good mix of orgs in here. Some well-known orgs that have teams in other games like League of Legends, like London Esports, Eminem Gaming. I interviewed London Esports the other day. Uh, Alfie, their CEO. So do check that out. And he did say he's a bit. He's a bit. Uh, he didn't seem, you know, too uh, proud of their results. They're sitting at the bottom of the league, but you know. They're in there at least. Um, it's good to see UK org. So it's good to see this this league that was um, set up whenever it was. Uh, I think it was last year it was first announced, wasn't it? UK and Ireland Dash Nationals. I'll be honest, I don't follow it super closely, but I will say that the UK has had some great um, talent in Rainbow Six over the years. Of course, late 2019, 
Former M&M Gaming UK players won the Rainbow Six Pro League Season 10 Finals with Navi. Um, so that was great to see. The roster previously played for M&M before being acquired by Navi um, in 2019. I know M&M have done pretty well. I think they've sold a few rosters over the years, but got qualified for the Challenger um, uh, series and sold players um so sold like the roster to other teams and i'm guessing um made some money out of that as well so good luck to them um yeah so there's that as well but also what i want to highlight as well is this rainbow six meme invitational now of course because the six invitational was postponed because of covid the community got together fought up this meme invitational that they could do online as there was no you know actual six invitational and you can see some of the teams here had some top players in with you know, a mix of different names and uh, specially designed logos there nice and bright and colorful I particularly like that you sad little man one you sad little man um, so that that happened on the weekend I didn't watch it myself but um, I'm told it was and from what I can see real great community spirit there um, from the Rainbow Six community setting this up and I've got a few tweets here so shout out to Desertu, Derry Holt he's a UK Rainbow Six caster and has been in UK sports for quite a while now having worked at the Newell and so on and um, I believe Derry was one of the creators of the meme invitation or came up with a name at least and worked with the community to put this together and he thanked everyone there and said the meme invitation will be back mark my words and for me it was great to see as well like sponsors coming on board for this community focused event like KFC Gaming got involved um, the team that won was Fox's Naughty List uh, in the end and you can see there some of the players some of the people that took part um, and yeah like some of the some of the um, sponsors that got on board Red Bull, KFC Gaming, Fanfic Gaming you can see there all the people um, that got involved here, you know, this is no small feat. There's a lot of people getting involved. There you go, Desert Tube, main organizer and caster, um, Fresh, Atroix, a few other um, casters, organizers, broadcast producers, and shout out to all the people here that got involved with this. It's just fantastic to see, and that's what I, partly what I love about esports. Um, the community focus, someone and Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> Has said next event when, and Desert Chiefs replied with "Welcome to Six Me Invitational 2022." So, uh, so there you go. <laughs> really great to see. And also, I want to shout this out. This fantastic trophy that was made um, by Anne Darn here, who posted this some work in progress shots of the Six Me Invitational trophy being built. You can see here a few shots really you know this is all like really cool really decent stuff and the hammer there on top like i'm really impressed with that and you can see a clip here from hopefully you can see this to see a clip from the broadcast competing for this trophy it's just going to be something else look at that best it's like honestly beautiful like sledgehammer get that out of here everyone can actually use a real hammer right so why wouldn't you have this one i have no idea why the video is upside down i haven't seen this before it's part of the meme invitational but this is the true beauty that we've got as a trophy for the victorious team all 3d printed out and ready to go this is what a real trophy reveal looks like ladies and gentlemen yeah this it's just something else i can't wait for the winning captain to have this to present this to the world <laughs> i gotta give so there you go there's a bit of the clip um yeah that's, that's what i wanted to talk about really rainbow six could this be a good year for rainbow six i've got a feeling it could be I and mean, then ubisoft looked to be making some decent updates some new announcements to the game it's got me excited about the game it's made me want to play it and on that note I know some of you might think this is a silly question. You let me know. Which what shall I get the game on? PS4 or PC? And give me some tips because I've, I'm hearing it's hard. So I might, 
I might cop out and just play the single player and uh, see how I get on. But I'm very intrigued by it. I hope to uh, look into Rainbow Six Esports a bit more, cover it a bit more closely. Maybe bring bring on a Rainbow Six writer in the future. If you know anyone who might be interested in that, please do give me a shout. But yeah, Rainbow Six caught my eye over the past week and uh, I look forward to seeing more announcements and more Rainbow Six activity in the future. So thank you everyone for watching as always. I will catch you in the next video.